So here we are, excited to tell you about a brand new reading program called Letters Alive, using the latest technology of augmented reality, which is 3D without glasses. So why did we develop Letters Alive? It's to answer a big challenge that we have with teaching our youth to read. A majority of our fourth graders, when we test them, we find out are reading below grade level. So we need to help them. Right, Gertie? <laughs> right. So Letters Alive <laughs> is gonna come to life in the classroom. Teachers and students interacting with the animals, learning phonemic awareness, phonics, sight words, hey Tommy, concepts of print and building sentences. So, and it also addresses all the different learning styles. So learning to read is gonna be fun and engaging <laughs> for our digital generation. And so at the end of the day, when you ask your kids, what did you learn? They won't say, nothing. So stay tuned to watch a minute of Letters Alive. Letters Alive, it's a reading curriculum that uses augmented reality to teach students how to read. And to demonstrate this fantastic product, we're joined in the studio today by a reading specialist, Tess Arno. And I see you've got the cards ready to go. And augmented reality, for those who've never uh, been exposed to the, uh, this technology, it's 3D without the glasses. You take a everyday object, like a flashcard in this case, hold it underneath the augmented reality camera, and on your computer screen, a three-dimensional an animal pops up. Now this is really important, Chris, because we have an animal for each one of the letters in the alphabet, so we have 26 total. That's a large stable of animals. It is, and research tells us when children can associate a letter along with animals, they retain that information, which helps them with reading. Yeah, and like, like, uh, like Tess said, we have 26 animals, so we can take Dana off and we can replace her with a different animal. Looks like in this case, we're about to be joined by Gertie Giraffe. And again, the augmented reality camera, that's what's doing all the work. We hold the card underneath it, it's, it's tracked by the camera and the software produces the three-dimensional <laughs> animal. Now, if you look at the bottom of the card, we have a series of five buttons. Each of these buttons has a very specific function. So Tess, hit that red button for me. And you hit the red button, Gertie disappears, and she's replaced by the letter G. Yes, and again, when we start talking about associating letters with animals, we now know that G goes with Gertie Giraffe, and it helps students to learn that information. And you can also see the formation of that letter because it still appears to be a three-dimensional object. Right, that's still the augmented reality at work. Now, if you hit the yellow button, we go from uppercase G to lowercase G. Now, with letters like G, they look dramatically different from uppercase to lowercase. And in being able to visualize this, this is extremely important for early learners. It is, because those letters look substantially different. The letter C looks the same, pretty much just size difference. But for the letter G, it's very different. So being able to visualize and to see the upper case and lowercase and know that both of those are in fact the letter G is very important as students begin to learn the components of literacy. Now it's not just about visualizing letters, we also want to uh, engage our auditory learners. So if we hit that green button, the letter G, we actually get what the, the name of the letter. Now the purple button and the blue button, those have very specific functions uh, for young learners. I'm going to let you explain that real quick. So for a consonant that has more than one sound, the purple button is going to do the hard consonant sound, g, g. And the blue button is gonna do the soft consonant sound, j, j. If we have a consonant that only has one sound, then only the purple button will have a function, and it will do that one sound. Oh, well, let's flip back over to animal mode, and let's bring Gertie back. There she is, she's so pretty. Now, if you hit the yellow button in animal mode, absolutely nothing happens because there is no lowercase version of Gertie. But the green, uh, purple, and blue buttons still do work. So let's hit that green button. Giraffe. We get what kind of animal we're working with. Purple button. <laughs> yes, that is actually what a giraffe sounds like. It I is. I didn't know that until I started working with Letters Alive, but that's what Gertie would sound like. And then we want students to build a relationship with the animal, so when you hit the blue button, Gertie Giraffe. You get the name of the animal. Now all 26 of our animals have a name. So you have Gertie Giraffe, Brody Bear, Wagner Wolf. They all have a name because again, we want them to start form those relationships with the animals. 
And again, giving them names also helps students really become familiar with the animals, the letters that are associated with those animals, and the sounds associated with those letters. Now we've gone over the functionality <laughs> of the card, we've seen what, uh, how fantastic augmented reality is, but we want to use this now to teach students how to read, so we're going to bring out uh, some of our 94 that. volt sight word cards. Now the sight word cards, they are exactly what they sight, uh, sound like, they're the sight words. Yes, and the sight words are important because we want students to start learning some of those words. Oh. Hey Brody, what's going on? Hey Brody. We want students to start learning those words that perhaps they can't sound out, like the word the. And so they can practice those so they know them on sight and can read them quickly. Now you build sentences in yeah. Letters Alive by using three sight word cards and one animal card. And you put them together and you can see on the screen that as you put each card down, the components of that sentence start appearing on the screen. Walk. So here we go, we have the bear can walk and the first thing you're going to notice is Brody is actually walking. Yes, so when we talk about cueing systems within reading, we know when you put those in a hierarchy, comprehension is the most important and the highest of those cueing systems. So we see Brody walking, so as a student is really thinking about the fact that what they read has to make sense, the bear can walk, they see him walk, so comprehension is embedded within it. Now we also know it's an actual sentence because if you hit the green button, the bear can walk. It actually reads the sentence to us. Now for our visual learners though, there's also some cues going on if you could walk us through what's going on there. First of all, they see him walking. Mm -hmm. That's one of our visual cues. We also see that we have a period at the end of the sentence and it starts with a capital letter. Those are important as we start building those early literacy skills because we know to have a complete sentence, you must have a capital, you must have a period. So those are expressed in the sentence above the cards that you've built the sentence with. Now, in addition to that, we have our auditory learners. We've already had that sentence read That's back. Right. We have the one-to-one -one matching, one card for each word, and it moves left to right. All of those things work together. Now, you and I are grown-ups. We know the, what the sentence should look like. Now, early learners, though, they might not walk. get it right. They might say, the bear walk can. You and I know that's not a real sentence, but I was wondering if you could go over with us now, like how a young learner would know they didn't uh, succeed in making a real sentence. Yes, as students are beginning to learn to read and are beginning to learn the vocabulary, there's gonna be times that they perhaps get the order of the sentence wrong. It happens. So what? how do they know they've got it wrong? Well, first of all, there's no period. That's gone. That's what teachers want students to notice. But what the students are gonna notice first is that Brody's no longer walking. Yeah, he's kinda hanging out now. He is, and that green button that typically with a complete sentence reads it back, Bear only gives the animal name just like it would if there was only a bear card on the mat. So there's lots of indicators here that students don't have it quite right and they've got some fixing up they need to do. And that's what's so beautiful about this is fixing it and up is easy. It's a matter of rearranging cards. It is. And students can do that without the labor of I wrote it out, now I have to erase and rewrite. This is a very easy way for them to explore words, explore this learning opportunity, just move some cards around, they've done that fixing up, and they have their complete sentence back. Now Brody's gonna, enter, uh, he's gonna react with whatever action word we put down. So we've seen him walk, but there's other action swim. words. We have the bear can swim. Now he's not swimming, but he is shaking his head, and he looks very excited about the fact that he can swim. He's like, yes, I'm a bear, I can totally swim. Absolutely, but he will react not only to action words Fly. that he can do, but also words that show actions that he cannot do. So our sentence is, the bear can fly, and as excited he was about to swim, he looks even sadder that he can't fly and mm. shaking his head no. Yes, no, he cannot fly. Now again, when we go back to that comprehension skill that's so important, the bear can fly is a complete sentence. So we have our period, we have the reaction, it will read the sentence back, but comprehension, we know that bears don't fly. That's right. So he shakes his head no. Again, so students are understanding what they read has to make sense. Now we don't just make declarative sentences though, we can also do questions. Yes, and when we build those questions, again, it's about reordering our sentences. So we have, uh, we have can first, and again, I just want us to pay attention to how quickly it tracks the. these uh, sight word cards. It does track them, and I'm gonna bring up another animal, just uh. so we can see yet one more of our friends included in our sentence. Okay, so there we go, we have Frankie Frog, he's shown up, he's uh, in all of his augmented reality glory. So what are we gonna have Frankie the Frog do? We're gonna ask him if he can eat. 
Okay, so we have Can the Frog Eat. Now first, uh, yeah, he is totally eating a cockroach that's he crawling is. across the screen. I can see uh, boys <laughs> getting excited about that. We have our question mark at the end of the sentence. And that's what we really want to focus on at this point. We know that changing the order of our sentence changes the meaning. So instead of declaring something, we're now asking a question. So we see that question mark appear. Some students really struggle with that concept, but this is a way, again, they're using the same cards, reordering them, creates a question instead of a sentence, and it's a very concrete way for students to learn this concept. And the uh, green button still works. We can push that, and we have a question read to us. Can the frog eat? Yes, he can. He can. And our animals not only react to our action cards, but also to colors as well. And uh, it's a very unique way that they react to the uh, the color cards as well. So as part of the 94 adult sight words, we have 12 uh, color cards as well. Is. So we're forming our sentence. We have the frog is, and Tess is going for her stack of color cards. What co uh, color do we have up first? Green. We're gonna have him be green. Now, he's already green, but he turns a different shade of green, so we know he is, in fact, reacting to the color. But we can use other color cards as well. We don't have to go with just green. Blue. We can say blue. Now, now he's a sad frog. He is a sad frog, but we could also talk about, are there really blue frogs? If there are blue frogs, where would a frog be blue? How would we know that? Right, you can do that. This opens up some cross-curricular opportunities right. in the classroom. So you're it not does. just learning to read at this point, but your students are asking questions. Uh, they're learning about science at this point. They are. Now, when you start, start talking about our learning styles, we've got our kinesthetic learners who are changing the cards and moving it, which changes the color. So Frankie changing color appeals to our visual learners, that green button, reading the sentence back, our auditory learners, as well as them hearing the color as it's red each time we put a new card on the map. White. Snow frog. Snow frog. So this is a way again for kids to start talking about not only Frankie frog but other frogs too and have some fun with learning color words and learning literacy. Now you're talking about opening up ways to talk about frogs. We also have an excellent uh, cross-curricular opportunity in Letters Alive and that is the video card. The video card is really fun because some kids really want to know about real frogs. Maybe they're talking about the frog that they saw in their backyard or their grandma's backyard or a pond. This is a way to really talk about real frogs. So when you place that video card on the mat, we get an actual habitat video of a frog in nature. And that's augmented reality too. You can lift that closer to the camera. You can uh, change the angles around. Uh, it, it's, it's as manipulatable as anything else in the Letters of Life family is. And this is a great way for, get, for getting kids excited, not only about Frankie Frog, but about real frogs and about science and things that they're excited about. Students love this because it's kind of like having a zoo in their classroom because each animal has its own habitat video that plays when it's on the mat along with the video card. And some of these animals that they'll see might be ones they've never been exposed to. I'm thinking of a, of a narwhal. A narwhal or a toucan. Right, so these aren't common animals. They aren't. So students that maybe haven't had that experience of going to the zoo or you wouldn't have a narwhal in a zoo, no. It gives them the opportunity to see those animals in their natural habitat and really to build that background and the vocabulary that goes along with it. Now we've been working in Letters Alive, but that's just one aspect of the Letters Alive suite. Next we're going to move into word families. And word families are for those days where you want to work with the letters that are a part of the animal cards, but you don't want to work with the animals themselves. Yes, because there are times that we need to work on phonics and phonemic awareness within the classroom. All right, now we're in word families and we're going to use the letter, uh, the letter A card. There we go. Now again, we're still working in augmented reality. We're still using the animal card. But in word families, when you push the red button, the animal's not going to show up. Tess, this is a good thing. It is because you don't necessarily want Brody roaring in your classroom or Frankie riveting across your classroom. Absolutely. When you want to focus on the letters, the sounds associated with those letters, phonics and phonemic awareness. Now in word in Letters Alive, you would just work with one animal card at a time. In word families, we're gonna be working with three cards at a time to build the phonemic awareness that you were talking about. Yes. So what do we have first? Well, all of our buttons function just as they did within Letters Alive, but this time again, we're just working with our chunks. So we've started with the letter A and we're gonna build that add C. chunk. And with the at chunk, we're gonna start with the word cat. That seems like the uh, word everybody starts with. It does. It's what you typically think of C. when you think of spelling and reading and phonics. So we have cat. Now with our fu functioning of our buttons at the bottom, 
for the C card, that purple button will do the hard mm -hmm. C and the blue will do the soft, but because we're working with cat, we're gonna use the purple button. For A, we're gonna be using the short vowel. The long vowel would be the purple button, but again, we're gonna use the blue button because we're using the short vowel. Now, I wanna pay, uh, pay attention to, or point out that every time you press one of the buttons, the letter itself highlights. So you're hearing it and you're also seeing it so you can associate that sound with that specific letter. Exactly, and it works with our visual learners as well as our auditory learners. Now, for the letter T, only the purple button will function because it only has one sound. So there is no function for blue, but we'll do purple. So we can do those quickly when we're starting to build our consonant, vowel, consonant words. So we'll do purple, blue, and purple. Now, if you don't have flash fingers, we do have built into the keyboard, keyboard uh, shortcuts, hotkeys. So if you want to start really blending those faster and faster, you want to use the keyboard, I would think, more often than not. You do, because then you can hear those phonemes sounded much closer together so students have a better capacity or ability to blend those into the word. At. At. Now, in Letters Alive, if you hit uh, the green button, it would actually read the sentence to you. In word families, you're never going to have the word read to you. It's always going to depend on the student to actually sound the work out, uh, word out and do the blending themselves. Yes, we want them to do the phoneme blending. So as they hear that, cat, they make the word cat. And you could even do this in reverse. So I have a picture of a cat. What do we know this is? It's a cat. What would we hear k at the beginning of the word? What letter would make a k C? and then you could go in reverse. So whatever suits the needs within your classroom, you could do that either way, or you can start changing out cards to start building more Which work. is extremely simple to do. So we're gonna remove the uh, the C card and we're gonna put the H card in. It's gonna track it, we're gonna H. have a new word up uh, for the students to, do, to blend and we start the process over. Absolutely, so now we have hat. hat, and we can change the vowel. We can change the final consonant. We could change out the whole chunk or again, continue changing that initial consonant to build new words with that same word chunk. So again, this has been Word Families. It's just one aspect of the Letters Alive suite. So we've talked about Letters Alive, where we're doing our uh, sentence building and reading. We've talked about Word Families, where we're doing our blending, our working with our phonemes. Uh, we're gonna talk next about the curriculum that comes with Letters Alive. We do package one full year's worth of curriculum with Letters Alive. Yes, we do have lesson plans, and those lesson plans include things like handwriting sheets, yes. because those are an essential as students are learning about forming letters. They also include word family activities, letter sound sheets. They also include things like nonfiction as well as fiction. So each one of our animals and characters has a short story or a little poem that goes along with it. So they get to know those characters, as well as working on rhythm and rhyme, which we know are components of phonemic awareness, and the nonfiction, which is animal fact sheets, which so many of our students really enjoy learning facts about all of our different animals. There's also assessments at the end right. so that teachers can assess their students at any point during the year, keep all of that documentation on one sheet, and have a visual representation of the growth of those students over the year or throughout the learning process. All of that is included within our lesson plan. It's all supplemental. Uh, use as much of or as little of it as you want, but it does align to the Common Core State Standards. Yes, and I like, because it is supplemental, it's, it's put together in such a way as uh, teachers can take out components of it, they can rearrange it, they can, again, use, like you said, as much or as little as they want, but they can rearrange it to suit whatever curriculum they're using within their classroom. So if they have those that are mandated by their district or their state, again, they can rearrange it, line it up to what they're doing, and it's all ready for them to use within their classroom. And in, in addition to all of that, in addition to Letters Alive, Word Families, and the lesson plans, we also provide about two hours of training videos that you can access when you buy the Letters Alive uh, suite. Uh, so learn how to do it when you first get it. It's a point of reference to have if you need to brush up on your, your Letters Alive skills. It's just there to make sure that you have all the resources you need to properly use Letters Alive and get the most out of it in the classroom. Yes, because we do want to make sure that you're feeling very comfortable with all of the materials before you sit down with your class and begin utilizing Letters Alive. So when you get Letters Alive, you get all that software, you get the 26 animal cards, the 94 adult sight words, you get the video card, you get the washable neoprene mat, I want to stress washable, 
sticky fingers in the classroom. Those happen. You get the augmented reality camera and you get the freeze cards to hang in the classroom. Those are really great because even if you've already have alphabet cards that you have in your classroom, this is a great way if you're using Letters Alive for a center to decorate that area and to have uh, a way for kids to really have a visual of associating letters along with the animals and the sounds. Now we've been working off just a regular desk today, but in the classroom if you need a reading area, a custom made Letters Alive cart that holds anything and everything that you have having to do with Letters Alive. It's got a workspace for your camera and your cards, it's got a retractable shelf for your laptop, inside it's got a drawer that'll hold two sets of Letters Alive cards, and if you don't have audio in your classroom, which with Letters Alive you really should because it's such a rich uh, audio program. Uh, you can get one of these Letters Alive reading carts with audio gear already installed in it. And there's a couple points about the uh, reading cart that you're a fan of. Yes, for one thing, you can contain everything within that cart, pack everything up, and it locks. And it locks. So you know that when you go back to use it again, all of your materials are there for you, nothing's been moved around if other people utilize your space, and it has underneath the shelf for the computer, there's a tray where you can yeah. line up and stage the 5 to 15 cards you're going to be using that day. So again, you're organized and ready to go with your class and you don't miss that precious learning time. And again, the cart is available as an additional purchase to it, but it's a fantastic additional purchase. Test, is there anything we did not go over? I think we covered quite a bit of ground here today, Chris. Well, thank you so much for joining and showing off the uh, Letters Alive. It was fun. I had a great time. Yeah.